All right, so our first one that we're going to get into right now is our septic shock here. Septic cardiogenic shock, sorry. So let's do it. This actually goes out to my peeps as well who are taking their test this week in Texas. Uh, I had a, uh, two friends call me from Texas and they said we need a video about the different types of shock and all the clinical manifestations that go with shock. And really, it's really simple if you break it down in terms of low pressure equals low perfusion. Okay, so let's break it down that way. So before we get into it, we know that low pressure in terms of your blood pressure equals low perfusion. And what does it mean by perfusion? Decreased O2 in the body, okay? So let's talk about it here. What does your heart do? What is the main, main function of the heart itself? The heart itself is supposed to pump blood to the body, correct? Yes. And now what does blood do once, I mean, why do we need blood in our body? Well, blood, whoa, okay, lost that pin. <laughs> blood in our blood vessels have little red blood cells, right? These little red blood cells they're like little rafts. Um, I like to call them like little little um, inner tubes. If you guys have ever been to a resort or um, Las Vegas or just a infinity pool that just goes in like a circle, okay? And you know, everyone has an inner tube and you're on those inner tubes and you're drinking your martinis or you're drinking your, um, your pina coladas and you're just hanging out on these little like inner tubes. So you can think of those little inner tubes in this big um, circular um, infinity pool, we can say, as your hemoglobin or your red blood cells. Now, your red blood cells are these tubes, your RBCs, and on the RBC or the red blood cell itself, there's little proteins that actually hold oxygen. These little proteins that hold oxygen are called hemoglobin. Okay? So that is a little protein. They're like little oxygen tanks that hold hemoglobin on your inner tubes. So if we are not having enough um, blood volume, like our hematocrit, your hematocrit is just your volume of your, um, the liquid portion, kind of like the plasma, of your actual blood itself. So, if you have a decreased H and H, H and H, hemoglobin and hematocrit, we know that that hemoglobin is the oxygen carrier of our red blood cell. We know that our hematocrit is really just like a hematic creek in terms of the uh, actual liquidy portion of the blood that helps it move, okay? So, if we have a decrease in H and H itself, the actual, just the entire hemoglobin and hematocrit, um, we're gonna have a decrease uh, perfusion. We don't have enough red blood cells to push all that oxygen that we get from the lungs around the body. So, this directly correlates with our cardiac output. You know, what maintains this push? What maintains this current that's supposed to be pushing all of this red blood cells around the body? 
Where does that push come from? Almost like the waves of the ocean. That push comes from our ventricles and our heart. So our right side is being pushed to our lungs, right? So this right ventricle is pushing directly to the lungs. Once we get the oxygen from the lungs, then it comes back to that left atrium down through our bicuspid valve, right? If you want to make a uh, gun and put it across your chest there, bicuspid, you have two on the, on the left, and you have a tricuspid, three on the right, and it um, goes down at that left ventricle. That left ventricle is the money maker. It's the guy that pumps out oh, all of that oxygen blood to the rest of the body. So guys, it's going directly through the aorta to the rest of the body, okay? And that's what's really called our afterload and our preload. So how much blood is being pushed from that left ventricle? That's what's called our stroke volume. So let me erase this here. So we already know what's being pushed around the body. It's our hemoglobin and our, and our hematocrit. But really, who cares about the hematocrit, really? Our really main concern is our hemoglobin, right? If we have a decrease in hemoglobin, obviously our hematocrit is going to be low as well. So they, they, they go down together. And usually it's a 1 to 3 ratio, okay? So, 1 to 3. If you have anything less than 8 hemoglobin, anything less than an 8 on your lab values, the patient will need a blood transfusion. So anything that is kind of borderline, like 9 or let's say a, um, a 10, you're going to want to watch that hemoglobin very, very closely. But the hemoglobin is going to directly correlate with your hematocrit. So if you have an 8 hemoglobin, just 8 times 3 is 24. That's going to be your hematocrit. Cool? If you have a 10 hemoglobin, it's going to be 30 for hematocrit. So really, all you really need to know is your hemoglobin, and you can get your hematocrit as well. So, we already know that, let's say we have a good H&H, &H, okay? Our H&H &H is great, and we have enough volume now, okay? So we have enough volume, and we really just want to know how much is being pumped out of that left ventricle. So let that left ventricle, in one stroke, in one pump, is called our stroke volume. How much is being pushed out in one stroke? And usually it's about an ounce, uh, maybe two ounces of fluid per stroke, per pump, okay? Now, how much is being pumped out in a minute? In 60 seconds. So 60 seconds or one minute. How much blood is being pumped out? That's called our cardiac output. How much oxygen, um, sorry, oxygen carrying blood is being pumped from that left ventricle? That's our cardiac output. Your cardiac output should be between 4 to 8 liters per minute. 4 to 8 liters per minute. Now that just really depends on your patient themselves, okay? So if you have a tiny patient, let's say who's like 100 pounds, or if you have a bigger patient that's, let's say, 300 pounds, it really just depends on your patient themselves, okay? But that's just the normal, four to eight. So when we're talking about preload and afterload, all we're really talking about is stroke volume, 
that's the phases of stroke volume. So pre and after. Preload is, remember, stroke volume is that one stroke, that one boom pump from that left ventricle. Um, that preload is pulling back like a slingshot, pulling back pre, after is letting go of the slingshot, boom, and it's taking off. That's the after load, okay? And that after load is boom, where that blood goes, mm, after it squeezes. Pre is pre filling, 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 pull, 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 after, boom. We're punching, and that's your afterload. That's one stroke. Your cardiac output, how much is being pumped out in one minute? So, what the heck is blood pressure then? Well, blood pressure is a mixture of cardiac output, how much is coming out of that heart in 60 seconds, and heart rate. How hard is your heart pumping to get that blood out of the body, out of the heart, okay? So in cardiogenic shock, we're talking about a decrease in pressure, which equals a decrease in perfusion. So in a cardiogenic shock, what do you think? Do you think we're going to have an increase in cardiac output? or a decrease in cardiac output? What do you think? Well, if there's a decrease in cardiac output, we're going to have a decrease in blood pressure. So remember, shock is that decrease in blood pressure. So instead of having a 4 to 8 liters per minute for, cardio, for cardiac output, we have something like this. We have something like, where did my pen go? Less than two liters per minute. Anything less than two liters per minute is considered cardiogenic shock. Okay? And as I said before, Decrease in pressure, guys. Decrease in pressure, decreasing perfusion. So, as we're decreasing pressure, we are decreasing oxygen going around the body. So, two liters per minute in terms of how much pressure is really being pushed out to the body, we're talking about there's not a lot of oxygen, not a lot of hemoglobin being pushed around the body now. So we start getting hypoxic and we start getting um, anxiety and we start getting really faint pulses. So guys, let's talk about some clinical manifestations of having a two liter per minute cardiac output and what really that looks like for your patients. Let's talk about it.